Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. Before we get into the uh, cool stuff I found for this episode, I just want to give a little heads up. Uh, Friday night and uh, Monday, or Friday night and Tuesday night, uh, there will be no show for the Geekinator. The same goes for Linux Newslog, simply because I'm going to be traveling and I, I won't have my studio or anything of that nature. I could probably do an audio-only episode, but I don't know how the internet's going to be where I'm going to be at. So uh, I decided to just uh, go ahead and not bother with getting an ep- with getting an episode out uh, while I'm out on the road. So anyway, so it'll be about a, w- a week. Uh, the next episode will actually be almost two weeks from now, uh, the Friday after this next Tuesday. Um, it's just you know I I can't uh, can't quite swing it the way my flights are. My f- my first flight is late Friday, and I'm f- coming back into town late Tuesday, and it's just <laughs> I, I I can't swing it. So anyway. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into uh, the cool stuff I found for this episode. Starting off over at Washington Post, Apple CFO Peter Oppenheimer is handing over the reins to Luca Maestri. Uh, Apple's chief financial officer, Peter Oppenheimer, will retire and hand the reins to Luca Maestri in September, transferring financial stewardship of the world's largest technology company to the Italian born corporate controller. Uh, Oppenheimer, 51, has been CFO since 2004, and he was the architect behind a $100 billion capital return program established a year ago in response to demands that the company do more with its ballooning cash hoard. So uh, Maestri is not expected to pursue radical changes to the iPhone maker's strategy on that front. Uh, He is a 50-year-old. He's born in Rome, uh, joined uh, Apple from Xerox in 2013 and spent 20 years at General Motors where he worked as CFO of several units of GM Europe. So pretty interesting. I'd be curious to see uh, what comes of this. Kind of car related over at the Irish Examiner. uh, There's a story here. Apple hopes CarPlay will drive further success. Apple is teaming up with major car makers to make iPhone applications easier for drivers to use while they're on the road. The system enables iPhones to plug into cars so drivers will be able to pull up, call up maps, make calls and request music with voice commands or a touch of a vehicle's dashboard screen. Pretty neat. Uh, They're calling the technology CarPlay. Eh, I, I think they could probably do a little better, but still nonetheless, it's a change from its original name, iOS in the car. Well, that's terrible. Uh, given last June when Apple announced its plans to make its mobile operating system more compatible with cars. So far, Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz, and Volvo are previewing CarPlay this week at a car show in Geneva. Other car makers plan to adopt CarPlay too. So should be pretty interesting. We'll be keeping an eye on that to see uh, what comes of it uh, as things progress. From TechCrunch, I ran across this and I thought that it was pretty cool. Um, Watch, there's a video, now the the TechCrunch story is called Watch Microsoft's Cortana Assistant for Windows Phone 8.1 shown off in a video. It's on YouTube. Uh, And like I said, as always, everything is linked up in the show notes over at our website. Um, Want to see how Cortana works on Microsoft Windows Phone 8.1? Gander above and all of the virtual digital assistants functions and features will be revealed there's a lot of Siri and a lot of what you see in iOS, uh, particularly with uh, Quiet Time uh, and that sort of thing. I don't have it turned on yet on this phone, but uh, there's uh, an icon. Let's see if I can cover my face so it'll actually focus. There's an icon uh, on iOS that. Uh, there we go. Up here at the top that um, 
if you're on uh, nighttime mode, I forget what it's called, but it basically it's the equivalent of quiet mode where notifications are basically silenced until the next morning. Now, on my particular phone, I have it set from 11 p.m. automatically from 11 p.m. to uh, 7 or 8 a.m. And, uh, you know, there's some rules that you can apply. Like if they're in this particular list in your contact address, then it doesn't, you know, none of those rules apply, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty interesting. Uh, Cortana has a lot of the same features and functionality that you see in iOS and Siri. Um, pretty interesting. We'll see what comes of it as, as it gets developed further. I mean, Siri's been around long enough now that it's, it's probably, uh, you know, got some catching up to do. Uh, Cortana probably has some catching up to do, so it uh, should be pretty cool. From uh, datacenterdynamics.com, VMware teams with Carpathia to sell a hybrid cloud to the federal government. Uh, VMware has taken Carpathia Hosting, which has a lot of experience in providing IT services to the U.S. federal government, as a partner in pursuit of an authorization to provide hybrid cloud services to government agencies. The Palo Alto, California-based vendor, vendor announced Tuesday that it was pursuing FedRAMP authorization together with Carpathia. The authorization is a government stamp of approval that certifies that a company is fit to provide cloud services to federal agencies. So, pretty interesting. You know, uh, they've been they've been uh, trying to get into the whole uh, cloud thing now for a while, and you know, it's it's one of those things that. Should be pretty interesting to see what happens with it. Uh, I'm curious how successful that they are. From the International Business Times. Why did I just get it? Really? Okay, go away. Uh, from the International Business Times, Microsoft leadership changes. Satya Nadella announces the two former CEO candidates are leaving. Um, Interesting, in a memo to Microsoft Corporation employees, the, the new Microsoft chief executive officer has announced some major changes to the company's corporate structure. The biggest news is that uh, Tony Bates and Tammy Reller, two executives who were considered high in the running for the position, eventually given to Nadella, will be leaving Microsoft. Interesting. Uh, Bates was the former CEO of Skype and joined the leadership team when Microsoft acquired Skype in 2011. When former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer announced a massive corporate restructure of Microsoft just a month before his announcement to retire, Bates was put in charge of the business development and evangelism team. Uh, the only reason uh, given for his departure is that Bates decided this is the right time for him to look for his next opportunity. They also asked members of the leadership to be all in with Microsoft's new direction, so maybe Bates just wasn't there. You know... I, you know, I'm, I don't know, you know, same thing for Reller. He's had chief, uh, he's held, had multiple CFO officer titles throughout uh, Microsoft. Uh, and most recently was in charge of the marketing group. The only reason given that, that she's leaving is uh, they're looking for a new single marketing leader approach. Uh, no reason given why uh, that single leader couldn't be Reller. Who knows what the real reasons are? You know, a lot of times, you know, uh, when a new CEO comes up from the ranks, if there are other people that were fairly high ranking that were in the running, a lot of times you see them get knocked off and leave the company shortly thereafter just because the new CEO doesn't want somebody, you know, potentially bitter or undermining uh, their new position. So, it happens, right? You, nobody likes to attribute motives, but really, come on, it happens. From uh, Reuters.com, Verizon and talks with content providers for online video service. Verizon Communications is in talks with content providers to deliver web-based TV services to uh, mobile platforms. Chief Executor, Executive Lau McAdams said in an investor conference on Tuesday. A day earlier, Dish and Walt Disney announced a landmark deal that will allow the number two satellite TV provider to deliver Disney-owned network content online outside of a traditional TV subscription. So it looks like Verizon's trying to work with content providers uh, to get some content. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not really a Verizon fan, so I can't really 
get into that, but I'm telling you guys about it because Verizon is obviously popular. From the Christian Science Monitor, Neil deGrasse Tyson to host the new Cosmos 34 years after Carl Sagan's original. This is pretty awesome. The good thing about science is that it's true whether, you, whether or not you believe it. The renowned science uh, educator and astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson once told Bill Maher, this Sunday, Dr. Tyson will take to Fox TV to make wonders of the physical universe all the more believable with a reboot of Carl Sagan's beloved 1980 PBS series, Cosmos, A Personal Voyage. After a 34-year interval packed with scientific discoveries, planets outside our solar system, full genome sequencing, the refinement of the standard model of particle physics, the sequel called Cosmos, A Space-Time Odyssey, wow, nice, will again explore the saga of how we discovered the laws of nature and found our coordinates in space and time, according to the press release. So, should be pretty interesting. Um, I will probably record it and watch it and report back if I remember to set it up on my DVR. So anyway, that will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.